Hey everyone, my name is Bob. I'm a ham radio operator. I live in a homeowners association and I'm glad I do. There, I said it. Let the comments begin. I've been waiting for some time to bring this video series to you. I have two series going in tandem on the channel right now, but this one in particular, operating in a homeowners association as a ham radio operator and the various antennas that we can bring to bear in this situation. I have tons of ideas and I'm going to be sharing them with you for many, many weeks and months to come. Now, there are going to be ground rules uh, during the course of this particular series. And instead of rehearsing them at the beginning of every video, that would just be, you know, a waste of everyone's time. We're going to get them right out of the way now. At the end of this video, I'm going to talk to you about why I'm glad I live in a homeowners association, even though I have restrictions on antennas. But let's first talk about the ground rules for engaging this series as a viewer or subscriber. Of course, these are my suggestions, and it's how I'm going to engage this video series and viewers and commenters. For some reason, this topic seems to bring out the worst in some people. Calling HOAs communists and name-calling people who've made informed decisions to live there isn't the way hams, or anyone for that matter, should be treating one another. So be a nice human during this series, which is going to go on for months, and make constructive comments towards one another. The second thing is that this isn't really going to be a debate on whether or not OTARD applies to or protects us or if the FCC protects us. That's not the purpose of this video. We're going to talk about antenna ideas to operate in all sorts of situations and springboard off of those ideas to help one another out. Let's face it, every antenna is a compromise of some sort. The best antenna may not work in your particular situation. So what antenna will be useful in your working conditions? If you have suggestions, leave them in the comments below or join the HOA Ham Facebook group that's in the comments below, or I should say in the description below and share your ideas. And perhaps somewhere down the road after we get several of these videos out there, we can figure out a better way to get together and talk collaboratively collaboratively about this. Make a positive contribution about how you can help out your fellow hams in operating in the restrictive environment that they might find themselves in. I work 100 watts single sideband voice almost exclusively. So anything I say about the antennas that I'm talking about in the coming weeks and months, that's the, the basis upon which I'm making a analysis or a recommendation. I might throw a QRP rig in there, five watts, 10 watts. I might get the G90 out, but I'm always operating single sideband voice and that's how I'm talking about and using my antennas. I have no restrictions regarding ham radio antennas within my home because the HOA I live in only cares about how things look outside. So when I think about operating backyard portable or placing a permanent install antenna, I try to think about how I can follow the spirit of the rules, do something unseen or inconspicuous. In this series, I'll be making judgments and recommendations based on my working conditions. My neighbors are very close in every direction every direction. I live on a very small lot. I cannot install a fence around my property behind which I could install a horizontal wire. Some of you live in an HOA on five acres of property. Perhaps you have some wooded acreage behind you. You're afforded a few more options than I am. Some of you are allowed to have antennas in the backyard so long as they're not visible from the front yard. Some of you live in high rise condominiums with balconies as your only options to operate. I want to present enough options to you in the coming months for you to adopt something that works for you. But please understand when I talk about the antennas that I'm sharing and my ideas, my frame of reference is 100 watts, single sideband voice in my working conditions in my neighborhood where anywhere around me, everybody can see what I'm doing. One final thought before we jump into why I'm glad I live in a homeowners association. The HOA Board of Directors is not a clandestine group meeting under the cloak of darkness without my permission. I've actually elected these people to be there and to look out for our property values. Because of the benefits I receive through living in this community, I voluntarily accepted limits on some of what I can do here. I can't put my car up on blocks and work on it in the driveway, and I'm glad my neighbor can't do that either. I can't open a drive through restaurant here on my property, and I'm glad that my neighbor can't do that either. 
I can't drill for oil in the backyard, and I'm glad that my neighbor can't do that either. Every one of us in the USA lives on property that is restricted by someone other than the person whose name is on the deed. And we all have the freedom to choose what works best for us. And here's why I'm a ham who has benefited from living in an HOA. When my wife and I purchased this property about five years ago, I wasn't a ham radio operator. That happened sometime shortly thereafter, so I really didn't know what I was getting myself into, but I knew I was restricted as soon as I decided to become a ham. I remember reading thoroughly the covenants and restrictions when we bought this property, and I was happy to sign up for them because I agree with what they're trying to do to protect my property value. So I knew going into being a ham operator, I would have a challenge in operating. And understand, I was coming into this at the solar minimum. And when you see my first antenna that I talk about as my favorite antenna operating in a homeowners association, you're going to see a pretty impressive QSO map. And that was mostly at the solar minimum. I have enjoyed the challenge of learning how to operate as a newer ham with the restrictions on antennas. It's been quite fun for me. So I don't know why people get all upset about this topic. Quite frankly, it taught me how to poda. <laughs> no one had to take me to a park and show me how to set up my portable antenna. I have done it previously double digit times in the backyard. As a matter of fact, I frequently talk about operating backyard portable. It taught me how to poda, other than learning the exchange and managing a pile up, because I can't typically get a pile up here operating out of the QTH. I've done it a few times on field day on 100 watts and my 73 foot end fed, but operating here, backyard portable, setting up, tearing down, setting up, tearing down, it taught me how to poda. I can go portable anywhere, could probably even do a soda because I've really been working on some small and lightweight antennas. The next thing is I learned digital as a result of operating here. There were times where the bands were just absolutely dead. There was also a time where I had to tear down the shack. I've turned down the shack twice now. The buildup the last time is pretty impressive and you're gonna be seeing that in some coming videos. Because I'm working here in an HOA and sometimes have to use compromised antennas, one time I decided, you know what, I should really check into this digital thing. And yep, I do operate digital using the internet. There comes the next debate. So with my HT, my hotspot, and the internet, the world is my oyster. I can operate anywhere, get into all kinds of talk groups, cross mode, be on all the digital modes. I learned that primarily because I live in an HOA and I wanted some options for when the bands were dead and my 100 watts and my compromised antenna wouldn't get me out as far as I wanted to be. And here it is, the single greatest reason why I'm glad I'm a ham radio operator living in a homeowners association. It has made me prepared. The reason I got into ham radio was for emergency preparedness communication. I've already talked about setting up and tearing down antennas. It also has me where my go bags are made so that I can vacate the shack rather quickly. Every place in the go bag has a spot for a specific piece of equipment that allows me to leave here if there's a pending hurricane bearing down on us and we feel the need to vacate the property. Having to set up and break down not just antennas, but ham radios in the back backyard, portable power solutions, feed lines, the list goes on and on. I am extraordinarily prepared as a relatively newer ham than many for emergency communications on the go. And I would say that's it. That's the reason why I'm glad that I live in a homeowners association. It has forced me to learn how to operate portable. And that's what I want to be. I want to be able to go anywhere and operate be functional, and communicate both locally, regionally, and around the world. I can do that. So, yep, my name is Bob. I'm a ham radio operator. I live in a homeowners association, and I'm glad I do. I live within 20 miles of three professional sports teams. As a matter of fact, many of you know Tampa Bay as Champa Bay from the success some of our teams have had in the last couple of years. Spring training, we have spring training baseball teams down here all over the place. I have choices to go and see. 
With a 15 minute drive, I'm on the beach. I can have a ride on a boat. I can surf. I can't surf, but I could surf if I wanted to. The list goes on and on. It's a foodie town. There are so many benefits to living here in the Tampa Bay area. I probably couldn't find a home that's not in a homeowners association if I wanted to, but I don't want to because operating here in this set of circumstances has made me a more proficient operator in emergency communication. That's right, I'm glad I'm here. So those are the ground rules. Let's have a positive time here over the next coming weeks and months as we talk about all the opportunities we have to be creative and put all kinds of antennas up in our restrictive areas. Again, I'm not gonna repeat all of this in every video, but I am going to refer back to this video frequently because it's important that we understand the basis for the future discussion. Thanks for hanging out with me today, friends. Talk to you soon. Looking forward to this series, 73.